All right, so the next two things that we're going to do here are first, we're going to write the select menu option routine. Pretty simple. When you look at it, it's static, and it's static because, again, it deals with main. There's only one of them in here. Also, static here. Now, if you remember before the break, I used there, actually dropped down that the, the help that it gave me to generate that. The advantage of using and letting the system generate it for you is you don't have to remember the word static, and if there's a parameter, you don't have to worry about passing it. That's probably the only real advantage to doing it that way. There, you know, other than that, I don't know if there is one. Also, this is returning an int. So whatever we return here is going to get shoved into here. All right. And then, depending on whatever we return, it's going to perform an option. Now, we're going to set it up so inside of our menu option, if you put in anything other than a 0, a 1, a 2, or a 3, it's not going to accept it. So the only thing that it should be able to return eventually to line 30 here is a 0, 1, 2, or 3, which means when we call this routine, we should only be passing it a 0, 1, 2, or 3. All right? So let's write the code here for select menu option. And the first thing we're going to do is remove this throw statement. All right? Makes no sense to have that there. So I could have called this selection. I could have called it anything. It doesn't matter. But I just happen to call it pick. All right? Literally, I was writing this at home at about 8 o'clock at night while I was watching some TV show I didn't care about. So a lot of times that's how I do my work. Not, a, not grading, but that's how I do a lot of my work. I need some background noise. So I said int pick equals zero. Okay? String str equals the empty string. str in just a minute, str is going to become our menu. Did you all hear what I said? It's going to become our menu. We're going to ask the user to enter a zero to quit, a one to add a new book to the book inventory, a two to add a book to the shopping cart, a three to check out the purchases, and then we'll say, please enter a zero, one, two, or three now. Does that make sense? Now, what we're going to do then is we're going to attempt to convert it to an integer. When we do that, one of two things will happen. It'll work or it won't work. If it works, we put in an integer, correct? We still don't know if it's a valid integer or not, but we put in an integer. And if it doesn't work, we didn't put in an integer. We either left it blank or we put in something non-numeric. So we're going to try to handle all of that stuff right now. All right? So I'm going to put it inside of a try block. When you have a try, I'm just immediately going to put a catch down here. Okay, now there's no code in there yet, but we're going to put that in right now. So I'm going to build the string right here. So str plus equals, enter a zero to quit. We'll put a backslash n at the end. I think that's probably going to help. str plus equals, Enter a one to add a new book to inventory, to the inventory, oh, I don't want that to be a big N. And I'm sorry, I put a backslash in on the bot at the end of that too. Sorry. Enter a two to add a book to your shopping cart. Oops. 
enter a three to check out what's in your cart. And again, if you don't like what I'm using here, you can put in your own stuff. That doesn't matter. Anything in here can be, you know, that we're just building a simple menu. STR plus equal, finally. Please enter a 0, 1, 1, 2, or 3 now. All right. Then we're going to do a console.write. And we're going to do a console.write of str. In fact, I don't even need the word console, remember? So just write str. Now, even if you're still typing, just stop for a second, please, and look up on the screen here. All right? So I should, don't run yours yet, but I should be able to run this. What it's telling me that, oh, I'm not returning anything yet, so let's just say return zero. I'll, I'll re, I'm going to get rid of that line later. So let's see if it runs now. So there's my stuff. I hit enter. Okay, there's my, you maybe saw it, but I need a read line in there so I could see it. So it does not disappear from the screen, and I need, I'm going to get rid of this for now and just put nothing in there. All right. So all I'm trying to show you is looking at this is right now when I run this, there's my beginning message. There it's telling me to enter something. Does that make sense? We haven't done anything to handle that yet. We're going to do that right now. All right. But as of right now, it looks okay. And again, that's one thing. When you are writing a console application, you can typically provide a lot more information to the user. You've only got a certain amount of screen size. You can have multiple screens now, and you know how to do that. But you only have a certain amount of screen size if you're doing a GUI. That's why a lot of times people might, you know, you, when you've got a help button, isn't that why you have it? And you know how to build a help too. So tomorrow, if you wanted to build a help for this thing, you could just build a message box, build a string like I just did, all right, and then just show that as an example. All right, but I'm taking for granted that what we've done in here so far makes sense to you. All right. All right, so there's different ways that we can do this. We can do a convert to integer. We can do an int.parse. All right, but they're both basic, basically going to do the same thing. We, we now want to attempt to take whatever we put into that entry where it says enter a one, two, or three now. And we're going to attempt to convert it into an integer. So I just used convert.2 int 32. So I said pick equals convert.2 int 32 read line. And again, I'm trying to kind of tie together some stuff that we've been working on throughout the whole semester. Especially if you're struggling in here, just look up on the screen. This is saying, right here, all right, and now I don't want that read line there anymore, okay? But this is going to say, enter a zero to quit, enter a one, enter a two, enter a three, please enter a zero, one, two, or three now, and the cursor is going to be sitting right there. All right, so if I put in a one, this is going to work just fine, or a zero, or a two, or a three, or a 57. But if I leave it blank or I put my name in there, it's not going to work. That should make sense to all of you. And right now, the program is going to blow up because we're not catching any exceptions yet. We're going to put that in in just a minute. All right, so, you know, I, again, I guess I've been a little lax here. I can put in here, this was the menu option selected this will be the menu string for lack of better words so i can come in here and say build menu string all right 
and I'll put in here attempt to convert user input to an int. Hopefully all that makes sense. All right. Now, there's different ways that I can handle this. But if I come back in here and I look here and I go out and I'm going to type in here right now, what are the built-in C-sharp exceptions? All right, so built-in exception classes in C-sharp. Well, I want to go to the docs because I think that's probably going to have the best. All right, there's exception class. So, looks like they're all in here. Okay, but I, I, I can pretty much guarantee you we won't have an exception in there for a menu option that's out of range. I pretty much can, can guarantee you that. So, let's even look range. There's an argument out of range exception. We could put that in. We could use that. Maybe that's what we should use. In fact, on mine, I just used... Uh, I'll, well, I'm going to show you what I did. Okay. So, but there's two ways that we can handle this. And I'm going to show you both of them right now. This is what I did. So I said, if the pick is less than zero or the pick is greater than three. Now, please look up on the screen again. Sorry, I, I, I know we're doing this slowly, but I want to be real deliberate here. We do not even get to this line unless that succeeded. If that fails, we never see this code. We jump right down to the exception. And if it can't find an exception, the program will just quit there. All right. But if this is the case, so if it's like that, there's really two things that I could do. I could throw an exception right there. I could throw one of those argument out of range exceptions and it would be fine. It would be totally fine to do that. Or I can do what I did, which is, you know what? You screwed up. So I just call this again. All right. Now I could give them a message here. I could put a right line there that says you must enter a zero, one, two, or three, but I'm going to ask them to do that again anyway. So all I did here was I called select menu option all over again. Does that make sense to people? Now, if when we when we did this, if we didn't put in something numeric, all right, we're going to get a format exception. Just so you know, we're going to get a format exception. So that's what I caught. And I called it FE for format exception. All right. And what did I do? I did a right line. Here I told them illegal input. Enter a 0, 1, 2, or 3. All right. Plus, plus I came in here, and you didn't have to do this. And I came in here and I put in a backslash N, so a, a new line, plus FE dot message. So not only am I providing my message, I'm providing the system message. All right. And I'm going to run this in just a minute. All right. I'm going to run this in just a minute. Now, what I want to do, because it's going to basically, I'm going to ask them to, to, uh, do the menu again, all right? So if I did that right away, if I just right now, if I called select menu option, it might happen so fast that you didn't see it, but you know what, I, you know what else I wanna do? I wanna actually clear my console first. So actually what I am gonna do is I am gonna grab this, I'm gonna take the same code that I have here. Okay, so there's my right line, I'm gonna say, read line with nothing in it and then i'm going to say console dot clear and i'm going to call select menu option all over again please stop for a second look on the screen because i'm going to grab all that code 
all of it. And I'm going to do it right there too. Now, that's that's taking five or six lines of code. And I can't, of course, I can't do the right line here because I'm not in my catch. So I'm going to do that. You could, I could take that, take those four lines or four of those and put them in their own method. Maybe I should, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So play computer here, please. You come in here and you give them this menu. You ask them to enter a zero, one, two, or three. All right. Then you could attempt to convert it. Let's say they put in six. Is six less than zero? No. Is it greater than three? Yes. So it should give a right line that says illegal input, enter a zero, one, two, or three. It should stop right there and wait for me to hit a key and hit enter. It should clear the screen and then it should show my menu again. In much the same way, if I put in something that's non-numeric, it will now write illegal input, enter a one, two, or three. It'll give me the system error message It'll again give me a read line to stop. Then it'll clear the screen. Then it'll allow me. Okay. There's only one more line we got to change and we're done with this, with this particular method. And that is, we don't want to return zero. If we get down to the bottom here, we want to return what we picked. So again, if I run this now, it gives me my message. It stops. I hit enter. It gives me that. I'm going to leave it blank. It says illegal input. And then it also says input string was not in the correct format. See that? And now as soon as I hit enter, boom, it brings my menu up again. So now if I put in something out of range, let's put negative three in. It says illegal input. Enter a zero, one, two, or three. I hit enter, my menu comes up again. Now maybe I'm going a little nutso with the console.clears, and actually I don't even need that FN or that backslash N there because it does put it on a new line. All right, because it's a right line. Maybe I went a little nuts with the console.clears, but if, if you keep putting in bad input, then you fill up your screen with bad input. And if you're that helpless, it's not gonna help you a lot. I mean, I'm giving you a message telling you what you did was wrong. And in one case, if it's not numeric, now, notice because now it's all on one line. So if I come in here and I say nothing, now it says illegal input, enter zero, one, two, or three, input string was not in the correct format. It's all together. If I wanted to, I probably could have put a black backslash in there. But the point is, I'm trying to make it as hard for someone to screw up as possible. That said, as long as there's a human element, there's always that chance. All right. For whatever reason, people are just going to keep screwing up. Now, I should be able to come in here now, and I'm going to call this perform option. Okay, I haven't written anything for it yet. But if I wanted to, if I wanted to, I could come in here right now, and as an example, I could do a mess. Don't do this, because I'm going to remove it right away. I could do a message box dot show. In fact, not a show. I'm not doing a GUI. I could do a right line and I could say the option selected was plus option. And even though I really don't need to, I'll put a two string on it anyway. And that should come back and say the option selected was zero or it was one or it was two or it was three. The only reason I might want to do that is if for some reason, it appears something funky is happening. So I could put that in there. If I didn't want to do that, so let's say I didn't want to do this. He's like, nah, hell with that, I don't want that. Then you'd get rid of it, but probably before you call this, you'd come in here and you'd set a breakpoint right there. And that way you could check the value of option because it should be set at that time. And all I'm trying to show you is some kind of tried and true tested testing methodologies, all right? And if you've noticed, one of the things I'm trying to do here is to write some code and then test it, write some more code, then test it. Now, we're going to write right now the perform menu option. We're going to write the zero, and then we're going to test it. Then we're going to write the one, and we're going to test it. 
then we're going to write the 2, etc. All right, because after we get done writing the 0, 1, 2, and 3, when we get done with that, what do we have? Probably about 20 lines. We're going to write a print inventory list and a print shopping cart function. That's all we'll have left. All right. So I'm in here. And notice private static void. All right. So we've got those. So I'm going to come in here and write this now. Another thing that, that people oftentimes do, I just want to show you this, is they'll come in here and they'll just do a write line. And they'll say, in method perform menu option. Uh, uh. All right, you come to the end. I'm going to run the program. I'm just going to pick one. And notice it says in that uh, in there. The reason I'm telling you that, okay, is that's what's referred to as a stub, if you've ever heard that term before. And that's another thing that you can do just to see if your program is getting that far. All right. Okay. So, eventually, what we may want to do in here, all right, is we may want to do something where we're going to enter a book price. You with me? But again, what about the book price? Two things. Got to be numeric. Got to be zero or more. So I'm going to make a decimal variable here. And I'm going to call it book price. Now, I can go nuts here. And I can make a comment off to the side that says book price. But I think that's pretty self-explanatory. All right. So now this becomes a big switch statement. I'm going to switch on option. All right, we could do it as a big if uh, with an if with some you know other stuff, but I'm going to write it this way. So I'm going to have case zero. For now, I'm just going to fill this in with a break, case one, with a break, case two, oops, with a break, case three, with a break, and default with a break. So kind of right there, all I'm doing is I'm stubbing out my switch statement. It's not going to do a darn thing yet. All right. So if they put in a zero, zero is going to end the program. So remember, this zero, one, two, and three, these correspond with these things right here. Does that make sense to everyone? All right, so zero means quit, all right? At least, I mean, I could just literally quit the program right here. I could do that. I could do one of those application.exits. Boom, I'm done, okay, and which is fine. I could do that, but what I am going to do is I'm going to put in a right line and say you have chosen to end the program. That's it. Okay. Why? Because that's what they've done. All right. Now, again, play computer here. If I, if I put in a zero now, it's going to say you have chosen to end the program. And it's going to break. There's nothing else in here. There's nothing to return. So it's going to return. Basically, this is going to be a zero. All right. That's going to be the option. All right, so what did we do? We said here, we're calling perform method uh, or menu option. I want to see what's going to happen if I put in a zero. Because it could be wrong. Zero. Well, I didn't have a read line in there, but it quit the program. If I put a read line down here, it should, hopefully at least. Whoops. You have chosen to end the program. There it is. Hit enter, and the program ends. That's good. I mean, all kidding aside, that's a good start. All right? But there's still a lot to do. Okay. So, and again, what I'm showing you now is how I wrote this. 
by no means am I saying, hey, this is the best way you could possibly write this. This is me sitting at my kitchen table writing code. And this is what I came up with. If it's a one, what does that mean? We want to add a new book to the inventory. Does it make sense to you that we need to add three pieces of information? A title, an author, and a book price. Does that make sense? All right. What I am checking for in here is I am going to check, and if you don't put in a title, and if you don't put in an author, all right, I don't even want, I don't ever want that constructor, that parameter less one we have, I don't ever want that called. I put that code in there as a backup, but I don't ever want that to be called. So what I did was I started out in here, and I said string, book, title. Now, you may or may not be aware of this, but in this language, it automatically initializes that to the empty string. It is. I could say equals double quote, double quote. It's totally fine to do that. It's a little bit redundant, but I could do that if I wanted to. Now, I came in here and I did this. Do. Yep, I used a do while loop. So I said, we're going to do this while the book title, whoops, dot trim is equal to double quote, I'm sorry, two equal signs, equal, equal, double quote, double quote. So I want to remain in this loop. I want to remain in this loop until I put something in there. All right. Well, what does that mean? Well. I'm, com I'm coming in inside the body here, and I said a right, not a right line, but a right, that said enter book title. And then I said book title equal read line. Oh, that's an equal, not a minus. I don't have to do any conversion. It's already a string. Does that make sense to everybody? So look at this. All I'm trying to show you, what I'm handling so far, so now I can come in here. I can put in a one, and it says enter a book title. That's good. That's what I want it to do. All right? And if I don't put anything in, it tells me again to enter the book title. See that? That's good. That's a start. I'm not saying this is perfect. I, I guess I do wish I had a backslash N there. Just, I like to have a little bit of spacing in there. I might decide I want later that I want to put a, a, a read line in there and I might want to clear the console. So there's a lot of ways that you can handle this. All right. So, so far we've handled the title. All right. Now, guess what? The author is pretty much the same thing. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. And now I'm going to say book author. If you do what I just did here, Make sure you change every instance of title to author. Otherwise, believe me, that, that is a logic error. And it'll bite you in the butt someplace around in the, in the program. So you can see, so far, I should be correctly handling both my title and my author. Let's see. So I'm going to run this. One. It says enter a title. If I put in nothing, okay, so I'll put in Moby Dick. Now it's enter an author. And again, if I put in nothing, and if I put in hello, it's just going to come up with my menu again because I haven't done it, gone any further in the program. All right, that's good. So I've got two things handled right now. All right, so what's left? Well, the book price. Now I did book price up here. I could just as well have done it down here. It doesn't really matter, okay? But remember, with a book price, 
there's two things that, three things that can happen. I can leave it blank or put in something non-numeric. All right, that's going to generate one of those format exceptions. I can put in something that's less than zero. And I'm going to show you because I handle that a little bit differently, but I'm going to show it to you in a minute. Okay? Or I put in a valid price. So it's one of those three things. So we're going to handle all of them right now. So I'm going to use a try block, which again is going to necessitate me having a catch block. All right, we'll put all this stuff in here right now. Does everybody understand what we've done up to this point? Anybody have any questions on that? I mean, this is your chance to ask. All right. So I'm coming down here now. And again, I'm going to try to do it the same way I've done this before. So now I'm going to say enter book price. Now, I can't just say read line here. I can't, you know, I'm going to get an error here. You should know this by now because read line expects that what you're putting in is a string. It's not a string. So I'm going to say convert dot to decimal on my read line. Again, I could also do a decimal dot parse here. All right, I'm not, I'm not going to show you every permutation here because we never get this done. All right, but there's different ways that you can do this is what I'm getting to. All right, would you agree? Look on the screen. If I get down to this line, I put in a number. Would you agree with that? Because if I didn't, it's going to be caught and it's going to go into this catch block in just a minute. All right, so I'm going to check here. Check for negative input. And I said, if the book price is less than zero. All right, and I'm gonna show you two ways, there's more than two, but I'm gonna show you two ways that you can handle this. We could throw an exception right here. We could, there'd be no problem. We could throw an exception right there. That's fine, we could do that. Or we could say something like this, book price equals, I wanna see if there's a math dot is there an ABS? There is. Book price. Now, I don't want to talk down to anybody because if, if, if the answer is no, it's fine. Did everybody in here when you were in maybe junior high learn about absolute value? All right. So if somebody says, how old are you? And you say 21. How old are you? And you say 28. There's seven years between you, right? Doesn't matter whether you say 28 minus 21 or 21 minus 28. But if you did 21 minus 28, you'd get negative 7. So literally, one way to remove signs is this way. So we can do that, or we could have just done this. Book price equals minus book price. Now that's what I did originally, this. But actually, the first way is cleaner. You're calling something that's built in. So I'm going to put that one in. All right. So if for whatever reason, purposely, accidentally, I don't care. All I'm doing is I'm saying, if you put a negative sign in there, I'm removing it. That's all I'm doing. Again, if we wanted to handle zero, we could handle that too. Now that wouldn't be caught in here because negative zero and zero are the same thing. So that wouldn't matter. All right. But I'm going to do my catch now. And I'm caught it, it's a format exception. FE for format exception. Again, you can call that anything you want. And what did I do here? I did another right line where I said illegal input. All right. I'm going to put illegal non-numeric input. Okay, so I did that. Then on the next line, I did another right line, and I said fe dot message because I'm letting the system print the message as well. Again, we don't have to do that, but that's just the way that I did it. Now, what's the problem here? Okay, I've handled the error. Would you agree with that? I've handled it, but 
I don't really want to call this function again. They've already put in a price. They've already put in a, a, an author or other and a title. So I'm just going to set the price to zero. All right. Now there, I could set up a default price if I wanted to and set it to a default. So there's a lot of ways this could be handled. I could, instead of making this a try catch, I could have put it inside of a loop and made you enter something that was positive and numeric. So there's a lot of ways this could be done. But I'm just going to come in here and say book price equals 0.00M. And again, I'm not even going to lie to you and say, you know what? Man, I just did that. That is, that is fantastic. It is a way of handling. That's all I'm telling you. Now, when I get down to here, even if I put in a bad price, all right, I now have a valid author. I now, I'm sorry, a valid title, a valid author, and a price that's zero or more. Would you agree with that? All right. So now I'm ready to create my book object. And what would you agree that this is a new book? Okay. So guess what? I called it new book. So what doesn't it like? Let's see. Well, you just have parameters there. You don't have... Uh... You're right. I didn't tell it to call a book, to make a book. New book. There we go. So now I'm telling it to create a new book, and I'm telling it to call the constructor with three parameters in it. Do I have to go back to the book class? You know what that constructor is, right? It says, set the title to this, set the author to this, set the price to this. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. And two more lines, and then we're done with this first case here. All right. So I'm going to call bs.inventory. Notice it, it sees this. So inventory list dot add. What do I want to add? My new book. This should be adding it. Whoops. No, not a big O. This should take that new book and add it to my inventory if I did it right. But I want to make sure. So I'm going to call a method we haven't written yet. So we're going to get an error after this. I want to call print inventory list. I don't have to pass it a darn thing. But I'm getting an error because we don't have that thing yet. With me? All right, so we're gonna make that. So I'm gonna put my mouse here. I'm gonna click the down arrow and I'm gonna tell it to generate it for me. Which should have put it down at the bottom of the screen. There it is. We'll write this one now so we can test our first one, okay? It's not real long. What is it, print inventory list? About 10 lines. Notice it already put the static in there again for us. If it didn't, or if you did it yourself, if you forget the word static, it ain't going to work. All right. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to print the inventory list. That makes sense. Okay. What if somehow we call this routine and we have nothing in our inventory? What if that happens? Well, what I did was I said, if it's less than or equal to zero, all I did was I did a right line that says there's nothing in your inventory, and I returned. Now, truthfully, in a bookstore, that should never happen, right? But I, you know, better to plan ahead in case something does happen. Again, a little bit of defensive coding in here. So I said, if BS, because that's our bookstore, dot inventory list dot count if it's less than or equal to zero now it should never be able to be negative that doesn't make sense but i'm being defensive i could have said equal equal zero but i said less than or equal to zero so if somehow somehow this ever gets called when it shouldn't and if somehow it gets called and the inventory list is screwed up 
so that the count has got a negative number or zero, this will now be handled. How? Real simple. Two lines of code. Right line. Sorry. There are no books in inventory. And return. So that's going to handle. So check for nothing in inventory, which is inventory list. So if I get down to here, I don't need an else. If I get down to here, I've got books. Does that make sense? All right. So I'm going to do a right line, and I'm going to get a couple new lines, and I'm going to say current bookstore inventory list. Call it what it is. All right. Now, we could do this in a lot of different ways. Just to do something different, we could have done this as a for each, but I just did it as a for loop. Okay. So I said for, you know how I write these, int LCV for loop control variable equals zero LCV less than BS dot inventory list dot count plus plus LCV. Right line. I'm going to say book number. And it's actually for the first book, it's going to say book zero. And at first I changed it. So I, the first one said book one, but I actually want to keep it as book zero. And I'm going to show you why in a little bit. So I'm saying book number here plus <clears throat> LCV plus a blank, oh, a blank space plus bs.inventoryList of LCV. That is the entire method. Did you hear me? That's the entire method. Now, again, play computer. Check for nothing in the inventory. If there's nothing, give them a message and get out. So if I get down to here, there is inventory. Print it out. Make sense? Now, the other one we want to do is we want to print out the shopping cart. All right? Guess what? It's almost the same thing. So I'm going to grab this whole thing that's in here, all of this, this whole thing. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. Normally, I wouldn't do this, but I just want to make sure we can finish this today. And I'm going to call this print cart list. All right. So nothing in inventory. This will be cart list. So notice it's smart enough that it knows both about the inventory list and the cart list. So BS for bookstore can refer to either one and it's just fine. So, so this will say, sorry, there are no books in your cart and we'll return. All right. Otherwise, There are book or books in your cart. Print it or them out. So we're going to say current bookstore cart list is fine. And we have to change this to cart list. And we have to change this to cart list. All right. Now, sometimes programmers, because they don't like to write a lot of code, would come in and try to take this routine and this routine and combine them into one routine. Are you with me? And you could do a switch to see if you were talking about the inventory list or about the cart list. I don't think that's a good idea. All right. I just think that's a way to introduce errors into your program. 
Also, please look on the screen. If you notice, this has one reference. Can you see how it's black? This, since we haven't given it any yet, has zero references and it's gray. Those are all things that you can check out in your code. So if you've got a variable and you're never using it anywhere, if you declare it at the top of your program, it'll, re it'll be gray and it'll remain gray until you actually use it. Now we're gonna call this eventually, but not now. All right. So I do wanna come back here and just put in at least a couple of uh, comments in here. So end program. One was add a new book to inventory. All right. Here I can say assure title not blank. Here I can say assure author not blank. And when I get down to here, what's this doing? Can't be negative price. All right. This will catch non numeric input. Instantiate new book object. All right. Add new book object to inventory list. Now, I'm not going to put a message there or a, a comment there that says print inventory list because that's what we're doing. All right. But I do want to see if I can check and see whether or not it works. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to come back into here. It's, it came up with input. That's a good start. So let's see. Hit enter. We can now do a one. Enter a book title. I already showed you the blank input, so I'm not going to go through that again. Okay, and I'm not even. I'll try it both with a price and with a with a, with a bad price. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say uh, a Christmas Carol. I think that was Dickens. And we'll say it's fifty dollars. Well, look what I've got now. Book zero, title of Christmas Carol, author Charles Dickens, price fifty dollars. I'm keeping everything on one line. If we had, if we had six fields in here, like if we added publisher and ISBN, etc., we'd break it up. We could have put each one of these on their own line. There's a lot of ways this can be done. Okay, but that looks good. I'm going to try to add one more just to see if it works. So I'm going to say Moby Dick. I have no idea who wrote this, so John Smith. And let's try to put in a price that's less than zero. All right, negative 44. It put it in as 44. That's good. Let's try another one. All right, uh, Murox C Sharp 2015. Author Joel Murock. And let's say, let, I'm going to leave that blank. All right. It says illegal, was not in the right format, and it went and changed it to zero for us. See that? So it appears as though now we're able to go in and add inventory. You agree? All right. So where are we? Let's start on the next one. I'll go till 10.15, and then we'll take a 15-minute break. All right. So let's go back and do case number two. Now, for case number two, it's actually, well, it's a little bit shorter, I think, than what we just did. But two says we want to add a book to our shopping cart. With me? So we've all, so far we've handled quit, and we've handled adding a new book to the inventory. So we're half done, really. All right. And actually, when we do the checkout, which is number three, 
That's not very long. Okay, so this, after doing this, this is going to be most of what we have left. So I'm going to put a zero in here now, and I've chosen to end the program, and I'm out. Okay, so I'm in number, I'm in case two here. Right there. Again, I want to put in a comment. And now I want to add, a, not a book, but I want to add a, a, not a new book, but a book to the shopping cart. Okay? It's not that you have to put these comments in, but again, it just makes it a little bit easier. You're going to be amazed if you get jobs as a full-time programmer, just how crappy people document. And I, you know, I could tell you that until I'm blue in the face, but you're going to go, oh my God, you were right. Because I've had people call me or get, get a hold of me and tell me, yeah, you were right. And it was worse than you said it was. All right. With variable names and everything else that you can do. All right. So notice what we did before when we got into case one. We did the book title. We did all that stuff. We don't have to do that now. All right. But it's kind of nice to be able to tell the user where they are. So we, we really, you don't have to do this, but you know what I could have done right here for number one here? We could have come in and put in a right line and said, you have chosen a one to add new book to inventory with a backslash in. It's always kind of nice to let the user know where they are. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, why? People are human. You think you're doing one thing. I was watching uh, a, a thing on YouTube and you could, you know, not that it's a big thing, but I, I'm a baseball guy. And it was where all the times when an outfielder has forgotten that there's, they caught a ball and they thought it was the third out and it was the second out. So they throw the ball up into the crowd, all right? You don't do that when there's only two outs. All right. Again, people are human. So in my case two, I'm going to do a right line that says, you have chosen a two to add a book to your shopping cart. All right. Well, the first thing I want to do you don't have to do this, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print an inventory list because I'm about to let you add one of those books to your cart. So I'm going to show you what those books are first. Does that make sense? All right. Now this is good. This is real reminiscent of a real bookstore because in a real bookstore, if you've got thousands of books, you're not going to be doing it like this. But in the simple example that we're creating, it does make sense to do this. All right. So I'm going to call immediately. So I'm going to Display existing inventory. All right, so that's what I'm going to do first. And again, I'm going to do that by calling print inventory list. All right. Now, so I, I showed them the inventory list, okay? And now I'm going to ask them, what number do they want? I'm going to put three books in when I run this in a minute. They're going to be 0, 1, and 2. Are you with me? So I'm going to ask them to put in a 0 if they want to buy book 0, a 1 if they want to buy book 1, and a 2 if they want to buy book 2. Now that may be confusing to the user. All right? Because they might want them to be numbered 1, 2, 3 instead of 0, 1, 2. We could do that. But I'm going to show you later the problem that that would bring up then, okay? And there's workarounds, but I'm just going to show it to you. So I'm going to do it this way. Now, what's the problem? And you're like, big deal, who cares? So it says, what book do you want to buy? What if I put in 99? The program's going to blow up, isn't it? Because it's an argument out of range right there. The range is... If I've got four books in inventory, it's zero, one, two, or three. Or if I renumber them, one, two, three, and four. But I can't put anything lower than that or higher than that. Who cares? Well, that, to me, again, that necessitates a try-catch block. All 
All right. Again, this is the way I did it. I'm not saying it had to be done this way. All right. So, attempt to get book number from inventory. Inventory. All right. So, I'm going to try. And again, so I'm going to start with the right line. And I'm going to say, which book number do you want to buy? All right. And actually, I didn't do it as a right line. It did it as a right because I'm asking him to put something. You know, I've said this kind of thing to you guys before. You really should, if you're asking for input on a console program, you shouldn't use a right line and then a read line below it. You should ask for the input on the same line that you're on rather than going to a new line. It doesn't make the program run any better, but it just looks a little bit more professional, in my opinion. If you say, well, you're wrong, then keep doing it the way you're doing it. All right. So, created a variable here. Now, the problem here, I'm going to say here, int book to buy. And I'm going to say equals, and just to for do something different, I did a parse here. Int dot parse console dot read line. I don't need console, just a read line. All right, so prompt them for which book they want to buy and then attempt to convert it. Okay, I'm asking you this question. It, we run this program, it says which book do you want to buy, okay? And we've got three books. I put in 57. Is 57, I'm not saying is it in the inventory, I'm saying is 57 a number? Last time I looked it was. So the way I handled it was like this. I said, if, whoops, well, let's put a comment in here. Check to see if valid book number was input. Okay. So if the book to buy was less than zero, so I put in a negative number, or the book to buy is greater than bs.inventorylist.count. Let me put this on two lines so it'll make it easier for you to read. All right. So if I put in a negative number, or, or I put in a number that was greater that was greater than the number of books I have in the inventory, then this is going to be true. Do you understand? All right. And how did I handle this? Well, I threw my own exception. So I did a throw argument, argument out of range exception. And it gives me an error because I need the word new. So throw new argument out of range exception. And I'll tell you what, I'll give you the next two lines and we'll do the catch after we do a break. All right. So I'm going to come in here and underneath the if, this means that that worked. In other words, if I don't do this if, if I don't throw this, I'm down here. I put in a number that was within range. All right. So I'm going to say bs.cartList Dot add. I want to add this to my shopping cart. BS dot inventory list of what? Of book to buy. And print the shopping cart. And now that we've got that written, that's good. Or didn't I call it print shopping cart? I bet I got to go along the bottom and look. Print cart list is what I called it. I'm sorry. So print cart list. 
All right. So now it should show me the inventory if I do a number two. Right now, if I put in a valid number, it's not going to, you know, it'll come in and it'll, it's going to print out my cart list. And if I put in something bad, it should throw this and I'm not doing anything in here yet. So I have to catch an argument out of range exception. Okay. I'm not going to do anything with it right now. Let's just, I'll just do this so it does something. A A A O O R E dot message. All right. That's all I'm going to do. We're going to add more after the break, but what I want to show you, there's no parens there. What I want to show you though, what's wrong here? A A A O R R E dot dot message. What's expected here? It doesn't like something. Maybe there are other parens there? No. Well, I don't know why it's giving me an error, but it is. We'll fix it after the break. But what I want to show you is this before we go on our break, because they said we take it around 10.15. So if I come in here now, run the program, make this bigger so you can hopefully see it, put in a one. I'm going to just add a single book to my inventory, okay? So, Moby Dick. Guess what? It's now written by Dickens. I don't care. And it's $55. So there it is. That's what's in here right now. So now I can come in and do a two. It again shows me that it's a two, and it shows me my current list. It says, which one do you want to buy? So I'm going to put in zero. And it says, my current cart has got that in there. I'm going to try it one more time. So I'm going to put a two in there again. And it says, what do you want to buy? I'm going to put in here nine, which isn't there. We're not handling it correctly yet. We will after the break. All right. So, so far, I mean, we got a good start. We've handled zero. We've handled adding a new book. We've handled, we've, we handled adding a new book to the inventory. We're in the middle of adding a new book to our cart. All right. So let's take a break. It's 1014. Let's come back, please, at 1030.